I was never allowed to be a gamer. Hello, YouTube. Spazzy coming right at you. I'm gonna tell you a story that I think has a lot to do with me becoming who I am professionally and as a person and a gamer. And before I start, I want to say this story has a lot to do with my parents. And whatever I say in this video, I also want to say that they were great parents and I had an awesome upbringing. So no shame on them, of course. Grab yourself a drink if you can and enjoy. I remember when I played my first computer game. My dad, who is a musician, got a PC in order to, you know, hopefully be able to use it for work. I was way too young to know what type of PC it was, but it had two games on it, and I remember both of them very well. One was an old version of the classic ball and paddle game, you know, when you clear the bricks and the ball bounces around. And the other one was an old platformer called Comic. I still remember the music to the title screen to this day. I probably shouldn't bore you with that though. It was set in space and you were this astronaut looking character jumping around, fighting enemies, getting upgrades and getting to the end of the level. I remember the first time I played it with my older sister. I guess my dad wanted to see how we reacted to controlling something on a computer screen. We had some fun for a few minutes, you know, jumping around, shooting some fireballs and then our dad was like, alright kids, time to go back and play. Out you go, out you go. My sister was like, alright, fine, 10 minutes of this game, I probably had as much fun as I could. But I remember I remember when he urged us out of the room that I just kept looking back over my shoulder at the screen. I wasn't done. I just started. Wait, what? No, I didn't get to kill that thing that killed me. I didn't get to see the end of the level. And that, I later realized, was my first taste of my passion for computer games that has stuck with me ever since. And from that point, the way I lived my life as a six-year-old changed. I did the things you do as a kid, goofing around, having fun, but several times a day, I would wonder if this would be one of those days where I would get to jump around in a spacesuit shooting fireballs. Now this was around 1995 or something. Having this type of entertainment in your home was very new. And my parents, like most people of their age and that time, were of course very skeptical about the new. What are the good things? What are the bad things? I mean, the question, can you get serious brain damage from staring at a screen for too long, was a serious question that people talked about. So I wouldn't get to play. Quickly they realized how sad this made me, so they struck me a deal. You can play this game for 15 minutes, they said, and they placed an egg timer next to the computer. When this thing goes off, you have to go outside and play. At first, I felt like I had won. I would get to play. I would get to be a spaceman. But you see, games, especially at this time, they were pretty brutal. You had to get kind of good if you were to progress in your space mission. So I realized that I hadn't won. 15 minutes was never going to be enough for me to beat that monster that killed me. 15 minutes would never get me to the end of the level. And thus begun what I would like to call the persistent struggle and bargaining between me and my parents that kept going during my entire upbringing. They would pull on one side being like, go outside, do homework, do sports. Me on the other side would be like, kill alien insects, get the teleport upgrade, finish the level. As the years went by, my passion just grew stronger. There were, of course, new games and new things and more levels. And I always found loopholes. I mean, through rough negotiations, I got that egg timer to no longer say 15 minutes, but an hour instead. My parents refused to ever buy me a gaming console, so I went ahead and won one through a competition of the back of a cereal package. I was so determined to exercise my gaming nerve that I didn't want to give them any arguments in a negotiation. So I had to check all the checkboxes. Don't give them anything. I wasn't a genius in school, far from it, but I always made sure that I did all the homework and powered through it, check. I made sure that I did some exercise through sports and football, check. I made sure that I was social and had plenty of friends that I could choose not to hang out with when I wanted to game, check. So when they approached me to inevitably give me that lecture, how long you been sitting there for, boy? I would say, what else do you want me to do? I've ticked all the check boxes. There's nothing you can get me on. I can be a spaceman. I was in my teens and I hated my parents for this. I hated that they didn't took an interest in my passion. I hated that they stopped me from reaching full potential of an interstellar superhero. <sighs> but it wasn't until I got older that I realized that I must also thank them. Through all the things that I felt forced to do in order to legitimize my time at the computer, I found out that I had created a thirst for variety. I actually enjoyed a lot of it. After all the homework, I realized that my favorite thing in school was math and English. I played football to such enjoyment that I actually ended up applying for a football-focused school. 
I got a lot of friends that I realized that the thing I love the most about them might be that they don't know or care that I'm actually a fire-spitting spaceman. Gaming was my passion, but I also had a lot of interests. In hindsight, I think my parents could have done a way better job with allowing me to embrace my passion without so much arguing and debate. But now my job is to play video games. Everything I do professionally has to do with playing games. And let me tell you, if there's one reason that I succeeded as a YouTuber and streamer, it's probably that I have the ability now to be interested in a lot of things at the same time. And I think balancing your core passion with your key interests will make you successful in whatever you decide to pursue. I never ended up completing comic. I am in that sense a failed spaceman. I never got to see the end of the level. But as it turns out, I'm happier, more passionate and more successful if instead of completing a game, I get to see the last level of several. This has been Spazzy, and I'm out. Toots!